innovation. And to electoral matters, more than 7 million people in Senegal are registered to vote on Sunday to pick a successor to President Macky Sall, who has been in power for 12 years. Martin candidates have been campaigning for the last two weeks as each candidate hoped to secure the country's top job. The presidential election was scheduled to hold on the 25th of February, but President Sall had last month announced delaying the vote to December. Eventually, a decision by the Constitutional Council to overrule the postponements led to the president settling 24th of March as election day. To avoid an election runoff, a candidate will have to win more than 50% of the votes. And for more on Sunday's election in Senegal, writing fellow for African Liberty, Arize Wafo, joins me via Zoom. Good to have you join us. Thank you, Olami. So let's uh, take it back a bit to when uh, the president postponed the poll just 12 hours before the campaigning was uh, due to start and only agreed to exit uh, after an ECOWAS intervention. We've seen an interview where the president defended his uh, postponement of the election as within his constitutional rights. You know that uh, this led to some uh, serious constitutional crisis at that time. Do you agree with him on this, that he was within his rights uh, to do this? Oh, absolutely not. I do not agree that he was in his rights to do that. In fact, when the judgment from the Constitutional Council, which is the Senegal top electoral court, when it came out, the judgment said he was acting directly against the Constitution. So... Uh, in the interview, we see a man trying to double down. We see a man trying to save face. We see a man trying to, um, uh, you know, wash his reputation before he leaves office. But no, he was not right. The Constitution did not agree with him. And yeah, that's it wasn't right. Uh, the president's uh, leadership since 2012. And we could see that there is some sort of absence of key stakeholders in this election. And, you know, there are uh, uncertainties regarding the electoral procedures, which inject a sort of unpredictability of what the outcome will be. What do you expect as regards this election and also your assessment of Marcus Sall as uh, president since 2012? Yes, uh, we have uh, the presence of the key contender, especially Usman uh, Sonko, who uh, is now unable to run for office because of the conviction. His presence is most notably felt, uh, even though he has somebody that is running in his place, uh, a proxy candidate. It is not the... It, is, it, 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 it isn't in the best uh, shape for Senegal at the moment because they have had uh, just two weeks for campaigns and uh, you just brought them out of the prison. The other ones that are already there, uh, uh, the other sow is also somebody that left the prison. Uh, he's... Uh, his, that is the President Sao, his legacy uh, in the last 12 years only started suffering in the past three years when he began to crack down on opposition politicians. Uh, aside from that, he had a good legacy for strengthening the economy. In fact, Senegal is the second strongest economy uh, in the West African region for a French-speaking state. All right, so wh while we can uh, commend uh, the president's uh, move on economy, uh, can I ask if it is some sort of coincidence that uh, opposition who try to, you know, speak up against the president sort of end up in some sort of clash with the law? Is it a, co uh, a coincidence to you? Oh no, it isn't. It isn't. That is uh, that. That's one of the areas where the president 
uh, did not do well. We see not just one example, but two, three. You know, the when it's three, then we are seeing a pattern. And that pattern kept on increasing. When people speak up against him, the next thing they are charged with one offense, and uh, either they are detained or are uh, imprisoned and convicted. No, it isn't a good look on him mm. or his legacy. All right. Well, very quickly, before I let you go, Makisal has been in power since 2012. This has caused a sort of erosion of uh, trust in uh, the people and such that uh, the Senegalese public still doubts his commitment to fulfill his obligations and also facilitate an orderly handover. Take note of the word orderly. If this goes well, how much of a difference will a new leader make in Senegal right now? It will make a whole lot of difference. Uh, it's, uh, it's something every Senegalese is praying for, that there will be a handover of governments. You see, even if uh, the candidate to the president is backing, Amadou Ba, even if he wins, it is still good for democracy. The most important thing is that there is a handover of government and uh, the constitution is maintained. If it were not maintained, then Senegal would have slipped into a dictatorship and autocratic government. Yet, uh, whether there will be an orderly handover, we would uh, have to rest on his promises. He has promised to hand over uh, after April to when his tenure elapses. We will hold him by his word. All right, then. We're just going to wait out uh, to see who the people vote for on uh, Sunday. Yeah. Well, I've been speaking with uh, a writing fellow for Africa Liberty, Arinze Uwafo Vaisum. Thank you for joining us on The World Now. Thank you.